Hi, this video is about analysis. This is one of the most interesting topics. I've never taught analysis as a topic because all the subjects that I taught, analysis was part of the assessment. And students analyzed data of all types, the text, the graphics, the experiments, then the case studies, right? But here, the, the purpose of this video is to explain a beginner what analysis means and how it can be done and why is it important, right? One little example, I'm keeping some flowers in front of me, right? There can be flowers of all different colors. If someone asks you to analyze the, the purpose of these the specific flowers by getting a couple of examples, then you have to start first is, your, your, your starting point is describing. How, you can describe by getting it, the petals are yellow in color, and then you can say these are the stamens, right? This is the, 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 the kind of leaves are like here. So that is all description. But when it comes to this um, analysis, it needs a bit of a description to begin with. And then the next one is explanation. Then you need to say why the flowers are, the, the, the same tree, the, the flowers are having different colors. Why the stamens are having this arrangement, right? You need to say that. Maybe different colors due to different reasons, maybe different species. Or can it be the so it's, uh, two different colors in the same tree? No, it doesn't make sense. There need to be some validity. Maybe the young flowers and the old flowers. When the flowers get old, maybe turning into a different color. Can you see now? You need to come up with reasons. So then the, in the case of analysis, description is there. There must be an explanation. The next thing is you should be able to Apply this, apply this information to alternative situations. How could you say, in that flower tree, there were two different colors of flowers. That means two different characters. So can it apply to uh, some vegetable that we are going to grow and we are going to eat leaves, but can it have kind of two leaves with different tastes or different appearances? Kind of, you know, application. Think about this. So analysis has in now first description, then the explanation, then the next one is application is also there. And then what we need to do is we need to make comparisons, okay? That means similarities, differences, both. And then finally, we are allowed to discuss about those findings. What are those findings? The differences, the similarities, right, the reasons, we are discussing all of them. So that means, can you see now, analysis is abroad. It has number of key verbs, right, starting from description, getting into explanation, getting into application, and then getting into similarities and differences, which we call comparison, and we are discussing as well. Can you see now how many active actions are getting together? And that's why it's so important, remember, Analysis is part of life. You will have your budget analysis, right? So, so, so your security uh, mechanisms anal analyzing. If you have a house and if you have a burglar alarm, you must be analyzing what are the best burglar alarms in the market and which one am I supposed to buy? What are the reasons? How would it, ap it apply to my house, right? So you will also compare with um, the burglar alarms in you know, different brands. Right, to find out which is which has the value for money, right? And then finally, you will discuss uh, why you selected that specific brand. Does it make sense now? So I got two examples, right? And the next one is going to be related to human digestive system. Okay, I want you to believe in me. Be patient. Follow my instructions, right? And then until the end of the video, you watch and get the basic idea and then apply that in your life, right? You will be a winner, right?
That's all I need. Okay, so let's start. So this information you know already, as it is about life events and also your study. So let's get a couple of examples for common analysis areas in life, right? One is the SWOT analysis. This is strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. It's good for companies as well as your personal life. Cost analysis. Risk analysis, cost benefit analysis, data analysis, statistical analysis, self awareness analysis, trend analysis, gap analysis, financial analysis. Right? So you will find in every area in life, you find this word analysis. No wonder why analysis is included in any subject. Right, so the next one is we needed to know why we have to study this analysis and how can it be done, right? So consider an example, marking analysis questions in exam papers would be a really great starting point, right? Why is you, it will get you out of fear or the fear factor. How can it be done? Well, you need to act as a you know, marker. You are, you know, although you are a student, you can upgrade your status as a marker and get the taste of analysis by marking questions belong to analysis category. Let's see what are we going to learn today. So how my assessments, what are the assessments? Exam questions, investigations, reports, right, are marked under the analysis section of your assessment grade. Then the next one is distinguish between quality of analytical rigor, that means the depth of analysis in answers for different grades, exam grades or assessment grades. Then the next one is understand how to interpret keywords and key phrases for different qualities of analysis. You might wonder what is different qualities of analysis. You know, just analysis, just called plain analysis, right? Then you have detailed analysis. Then you also have comprehensive analysis. They're not the same. If analysis is uppers, Detailed analysis would be pairs, and the comprehensive analysis is like cherries. They are not the same, they are different. And this is what you are going to learn under this video. So what are you looking for? Looking for, so I've got some magnifying glasses for you, right? Be careful. Analysis is also using magnifying glasses to look at the fine details of the the subject or the area you are analyzing. So you'll be, let's say, you'll be looking at, can I identify different analytical qualities or depths in answers or assessments by considering a familiar topic? I consider two familiar topics already, but the third one will be a little bit in detail. Okay, human digestive system. What type of answer should I write to showcase my analytical skills? If you want to show you have very strong analytical skills, bring it on. And this is your opportunity. Why? This is because I can improve analytical skills in my assessments and exams to get rid of fear. Then I can allow myself to analyze scientific information and situations in life. Remember, situations, that's very important. The study always lead to transferable skills. So analytical skills are used in future jobs as well as in events in your life. 
identify mistakes of my analysis or the analytical methods to improve those further, right? So those are the reasons. Right, now let's get this keyword and see the meaning of it, analyzing or analysis. It means you are examining, you know, find, find, you know, digging into fine details, examining the parts of something and discussing the relationship of the parts to the whole. Something is the one I said the first example, I considered the flowers. The second example, the burglar alarm system in your house. Two examples, I got it. The third something I'm going to consider is human digestive system. But let me give something a little bit broader picture example for something, right? So this is, I said the, in, in my introduction, analysis includes description, comparison, explanation, discussion, interpretation. So that's something here, the something is. It could be data, it could be information, it could be graphs, system, systems is human digestive system is a system. Human reproductive system, another system. Respiratory system is another one. Endocrine system is another one. Blood transport system is another one. Can you see so many systems in the human body? Pictures, experiments, reports, case studies, events, scientific concepts, these are the areas you can analyze, okay? Right. This is just get this screen capture snippet and keep with you. These are sentence starters in the analysis area and you can read it, right? That's, that's some additional work for you. Then you, the, this, this, is, this slide is connecting words. When you write, make sure in your analysis, you use this vocabulary. Remember, that is part of your English literacy. So your, your literacy needs to be improved as we move on. Right, and this is the, the, the most important area. If you look at these grades, A, B, C, D, E, five grades, where A being the top grade and E being the bottom grade. So in the analysis section of assessments, have a look at this descriptors. To get the top grade, it's talking about comprehensive analysis, right? Then getting a little lower grade, it is focusing on detailed analysis. And the just ordinary analysis is the C grade, right? If you describe, you would not have any of the passing grades, you will end up with D grade. If you write a little statement, that means it is not getting anywhere. So it's worthwhile, keep an eye on the big picture here, right? So the, here are the types of analysis in detail. The first one, just the plain analysis. I call it the ordinary analysis. Look at the underlying words here finding meanings of relationships, identifying patterns, similarities and differences, right? Distinguishing between relevant and irrelevant data. You know, some information is necessary, some is not necessary. When you graph results, interpreting and discussing is part of that. Now let's see the next step of analysis, which is detailed analysis. Now look at the difference between the analysis and the detailed analysis. You may find in addition to all the factors I said under analysis, when you go to detailed analysis, you need to make sure the areas you analyze should be in detail. Look at the word underlined, in detail interpreting in detail and discussing in detail, right? Not just the average point, it's above average mark. You need to climb up now, right? So the detail section is coming into the scene. Let's look at the third type of analysis, which is comprehensive. Now, with, to get into comprehensive, your analysis should be not the average analysis, the top one not the detail, it has to get into the next level. How would you do that? You were, all of area should be in-depth explanations, in-depth 
discussion, in-depth interpretation, and the data should be valid, right? Valid with reasons, not just validating, with reasons. And all the aspects should be considered to get the whole big picture. We call it to, to the, in the discussion to form a logical flow. Logical flow is the information is flowing smoothly one after the other. And this is connected sentence. The meanings of the sentences are connected like beads in a chain. Right? We call it coherent. It's the right word. Right? It forms a logical flow. Right? So this is where your task has to be done, the marking part. But now let me get into the example. Now, I'm going to ask this question. Let's assume, you know, this is a simple example, human digestive system. So how to analyze digestion in mouth? I'm not going to consider the whole digestive system, taking only the part of mouth to explain how to analyze, that's all I need. Now I'm asking this question. Can we swallow food instead of eating? Yes or no? You need to have an answer. You may say yes. Then I would ask, why did you say yes? Because they are small, you know, you swallow tablets. You know, sometimes some tablets are as a food, you get tablets. You know, food in the form of a tablet. So you can swallow it and drink some water. That is a yes, I will say yes, fine. But sometimes you may say no. Now, depend on your answer, the reasons are different. Let's get into the next one. Now, if your answer is yes, right? Can, I'm asking, can you swallow this big hot dog? Be ready, here the hot dog is coming. Can you? I have my doubts. Doesn't work. Because because your throat is really small, there is no space for that hot dog to pass to your stomach. Then what should you do? You need to eat tiny bit at a time. You have to bite. You got teeth, you got to bite. And then you have to break those into little pieces, manageable pieces, by mixing with your saliva in the mouth, the spit in the mouth, right? Because if not, you can't swallow, right? If the spit is not enough, you may have to drink a little bit of water. So you, this means you have to bite, you have to chew, you have to mix with uh, saliva, and you have to push it back you know, to go to the stomach. So all these we call mechanical digestion, right? So we are going to focus digestion in the mouth. I did say the first one. The other one is, once the food large particles are broken into small ones, on top of that, enzymes are activating. And then they are broken into smaller molecules. We call it chemical digestion, right? Now the next is we need to find out the differences between these two in order to analyze this information. Right, so let's watch a video to get the background information, shall we? Digestion in our body starts as soon as we place food in our mouth. Here we'll take a look at the digestion that occurs in the mouth. Teeth are used for grasping food and grinding it into smaller sized particles. The physical process of grinding food into smaller sized particles is called mechanical digestion. Now we'll take a look inside the mouth. Here are the front teeth. Here is the tongue which consists of muscle tissue and has taste buds on the surface. Movements of the tongue can break up food itself as well as move food around so we can chew it better with our teeth. Salivary glands are located above the mouth and below it. When we think about eating food, smell it or taste it, our salivary glands give off or secrete saliva, which lubricates food, but also contains a substance called salivary amylase. Salivary amylase is a type of enzyme. Enzymes are substances that break down large molecules of food into smaller ones. 
Many of our foods contain starch, which is a carbohydrate made up of large molecules. Salivary amylase breaks starch molecules down into smaller molecules called simple sugars. Breaking down large molecules into smaller ones is a chemical reaction. So this is called chemical digestion. So in summary, the mouth carries out mechanical digestion or breaking up food particles with movement of the teeth and the tongue, as well as chemical digestion with the help of salivary amylase from the salivary glands. Right. With the help of digestive system, we look at the basic differences between the keywords describe, explain, and analyze. Here are some examples. Describe mechanical and chemical digestion in human. Look what I have written here. It's breaking large food into small portion in the mouth by biting, chewing, mixing with saliva, and then swallowing or pushing towards esophagus is mechanical digestion. In chemical digestion, starch in food is partially digested by amylase or enzyme amylase. It's just telling the story, going beating around the bush kind of, right? Bringing the fact, you know, facts forward. Let's get the same question and look at the key, uh, keyword I'm changing into explain. So in the case of explain mechanical and chemical digestion in mouth, Look at the underlying areas. I'm bringing out here reasons. The food needs to be broken down, sure, into small portions. Why? Two answer is reason to initiate mechanical digestion. Then in the chemical digestion, what is happening, right? And why? Because low pH is needed to activate the enzyme amylase. Now I'm going to change the keyword explaining to analysis, analyze. Let's see how it works. Here it is. Analyze mechanical and chemical digestion in human. Look how deep I'm going here with the word of analyze. And I want you to read it and see how I am describing in short, giving reasons, one example I analyzed, and then I'm comparing you know, both systems, mechanical and chemical digestion, and I am bringing counter arguments. On the other hand, what happens? And then I keep on, you know, accounting on these things, uh, the, these two areas, mechanical and chemical digestion. See how deep I'm going there. And this is called one of the top analysis, right? So snip all these screens, take a print out, have a look, right? And that's so important. What are the differences between mechanical and chemical digestion? Well, there are two major types of digestion, mechanical and chemical. And mechanical, first, can be thought of, of the churning, pushing, and pulling food apart down into smaller particles. So we'll make food small, but this has to do with not changing um, any chemical nature in the food. So think about your mouth while eating. Um, what organs would help you churn the food? As you can see in this picture, these teeth are incredibly useful for breaking down food. And also, you can imagine the churning nature of the stomach. The stomach actually is lined with incredible layers of muscle, smooth muscle tissue, which actually churn the food and break it down into smaller pieces. The next type of digestion takes place in the mouth, stomach, and small intestines. And this is chemical digestion.
Chemical digestion involves chemical changes of food. So even before you start eating, your brain actually signals for the release of certain enzymes in the mouth. And this starts the process of chemical digestion. An enzyme known as sal salivary amylase will break down carbohydrates into um, simple sugars called monosaccharides. So that's the first step of chemical digestion in the mouth with carbohydrates. The second step in the stomach, enzymes called pepsin, for example, will break down proteins into smaller um, individual components, such as amino acids. But what about fats? Well, fats start to be broken down in the stomach uh, using a substance called bile. But it is finally broken down into its components, such as fatty acids, in the small intestine. Using pancreatic enzymes, um, the fats are finally broken down into, into smaller pieces in the small intestine. And for up to 40, or sorry, excuse me, 24 hours, the food will travel through the small intestine and digestive enzymes released will break down these foods. So things to remember. Mechanical digestion, as in the picture on the left, think M for movement, um, teeth, in, teeth crushing food, and the pushing, pulling force. Um, but it's not a chemical change. And then chemical digestion, using enzymes um, or even an acidic environment to break down foods. Um, carbs mainly in the mouth, proteins mainly in the stomach, and fats mainly in the small intestine. As a unit, mechanical and chemical digestion work to help us get the vital nutrients we need to survive.